What up, Tubies? Here's your War Boss Tay. Today's War Boss painting tutorial is going to be on these 10 Games Workshop Plastic Ghouls. And this is going to be a competition entry into Girl Painting 7000 subscriber competition on making painting tutorials. And this is for the Vampire Counts Army. For those of you who play Warhammer Fantasy, have a Vampire Counts Army. What I've tried to go for, which I'm going to mention again at the end of the video, are really debased, devolved looking creatures that are going to be kind of terrifying to run across on the field. So I'm not going for the pallid, gentle skin tones and um, you know a lot of soft blending. I'm really going for a really bloody, gory, feral, terrifying look, which I think I've achieved. These guys kind of remind me of Freddy Krueger, but what I was going for was more of a, uh, if you've seen the movie The Descent, or if you've watched any of the new the new zombie movies or zombie TV shows like Walking The Walking Dead or or any of Romero's recent stuff or uh, what inspired me also was the new Dawn of the Dead remake well it's not new now but a couple years back and just how uh, 28 day days later too reminds me of that, those with the the zombies infected with the rage and could sprint zombies that could sprint you know what I mean so these aren't your shuffling ghoulies. So stay with me, I'm going to take you through step by step how I painted these guys up. And this is the finished product that you should have if you decide to follow my paint scheme. I go over the shades and the washes as well as how to make the details pop out of the model so they don't look as as, so they don't blend into the rest of the model and by details I'm talking specifically these bones trophy pieces Various things like that like these pus boils that you'll see on on the model things that are definitely going to make your opponent Want to take a second look at them. So hope you enjoy this war boss tutorial and stay tuned to see how it all goes all right, so let's get started. The first thing that you're going to want to do is to prime your ghoul models with white. We're using white because a lot of the ghoul model, a lot of detail on the ghoul model is really going to pop out when you paint a white, when you're painting over white, such as the, the boils on the skin, the bone, is all the bone pieces are going to come out a lot brighter. And that's what you want. You want the details to stand out. Especially because with a lot of the shading washes, we're going to be bringing down the color, making them look pretty dark in the shadows and the recesses. So you want a good light starting point. So gray, uh, using a black undercoat will also work. It just won't work as well. The next thing you're going to want to do is paint the whole model in Deneb Stone. And this is the whole model, so including any bone pieces, of every, every nook and cranny. Don't worry about, about it, just paint over with Deneb Stone. And Deneb Stone is this foundation paint. For those of you who haven't seen any of my War Boss tutorials, I've been using it a lot re recently because it's such a great, warm color to start off with, especially for anything that is alien or dead that has a paler skin tone than a normal human being would. If this was a normal human being, then I would have gone with the Talarn Flesh. It's a little bit warmer, it has some pink in it. This is a very pale, color that is a great way to start off an undead model. Okay, and then we're going to cover the entire model with Ogren Flesh. And this one you're going to let seep into all of the shadows, all of the nooks, and all of the crannies. And this one really does all of your work for you at the beginning. It shows you what is going to be painted up as skin, what is going to be painted up as hair, what is going to be ending up painting as bone or stone or or you know what pieces each one is. Alright, so once the entire model is painted in Ogren Flesh, you're gonna let it dry for at least a couple of hours because you don't want the next bits to start <clears throat> mixing with the Ogren Flesh and then spreading out and it's gonna ruin the work you've already done. So be patient, put these guys on the side, go watch an episode of Breaking Bad or The Walking Dead on Netflix and then come back and continue on in the next segment. I love The Walking Dead! Alright, these are the colors you're going to need for your next section of painting the ghoul. Kemri Brown, Citadel Foundation, K2 
Chaos Black, Calton Brown Foundation Color, Bolt Gun Metal, which is a metallic color, Rotting Flesh, Red Gore, Codex Gray, and Deneb Stone. So, let's show you what goes where. You're going to take red gore and water it down, and you're going to use it to paint any blood splatters over the mouth, as well as water it down and paint it over the, the mouth area to make it look like nice and bloody. Then you're going to water it down and thin it down just a little bit, and you're going to paint it over any scars or boils that are on the body. So let's see where, for example, on this figure. Also for any piercings where the p bone is going straight into the flesh you want to paint right where the bone meets the flesh. And a lot of the models have like on the heads or on the arms examples of this. You can also paint along with the scars and the boils. There on the backs of the legs too a lot of the models have these, these scars. You can also paint if you want I'm not going to do it because I like how stark the, the bone is, but you can also paint some, some red gore along the edges just to show some splatter of blood either from the ghoul who's been chewing on the bone or the victim that the ghoul has been clobbering over the head with. You're also going to take your denim stone and paint back over any of the bones on the model. So any piercings, any bones that they're holding as weapons, and any bones you see on the model. The hair, quote unquote, we're going to be painting Codex Gray or Fortress Gray. Either of these will work because we're going to tone it down in just a second with the wash, but we're going to be painting the hair along the backs. All of the ghouls have these long spinely protrusions on the back, which are I'm painting up as ghoul hair, as well as right along the midsection, kind of covering the, the groin area. So. Those are the main places where you're going to find hair on the model. This kind of thick, porcupine-y, spiny hair. So I just painted mine in Codex and Fortress Grey. Both of those colors, either one will work. <coughs> and then, some of these models have rope or wood. So for those I painted Calvin Brown, which is a nice, deep, dark brown. I also painted any bandages or straps or stuff like cloth binding like this, twine this Calton Brown to tie them all in. And let me just show you, see if I can find another good example of the rope that I'm talking about. Sorry about my neighbor's dogs. Something must have gotten them held up. Right here, here's an example of cloth binding a piece of bone to the leg. So you're just gonna be painting that with Camry Brown. Next, we've got Chaos Black for the claws. Since the ghoul's claws are going to be poisoned, we're going to be painting those up to be a, a dark, deep green. But for now, we want to base coat those black. And I haven't done it yet, but you're also going to be painting the underside of the claws. So not just, not just the top part, like here, as you can see, but also on the underside. And there's also some flash that I can clean up there with uh, my hobby knife. Okay, next, oh, the ghoul's teeth is going to be a sickly greenish tinge, so we're going to be painting that in rotting flesh. Just a nice straight coat right over him, right over the teeth. You want to not be too, you want, you want to thin it down a little bit so the paint isn't too thick, but you don't, you want to do it very nice and lightly because the teeth is usually often one of the harder things to paint for newer painters and experienced painters because it's such a small area and it's easy to get the color all over the, the rim of the mouth. So what I do is I like to just take a little bit of paint on the edge of my brush, and then I like to just glide it over like that from one side left to right. And what that will do is it'll usually get all of the teeth and you don't have to worry about individually doing each one and then possibly missing. But everybody has their own style, so that's just, that's just the way that I've gotten used to doing it over the years. Okay, so that was a lot to, to take in because it's a whole bunch of different colors, but basically what we're doing is we're taking our model that was just washed with ogre and wash and we're adding the detail colors now. And the detail colors should be a little bit bright at this point because we're going to give them a wash next to tie them all together. 
So again, that was straps, bindings, ropes, bone pieces, coloring the scars and the pustules and pimples and the teeth. Mostly everything on the model that isn't a f one of the flesh colors we're painting in one of the colors that we just went over. Okay, so, oh, also, Temri Brown, before we go away, one of these models has a stake in the back. I haven't painted the whole thing of this model yet, but as you can see, it's got a wooden stake attached to some, some metal clamps and chains. So I just painted the, the stake with Kemri Brown. So any wood pieces that are obviously wood, I'm gonna paint Kemri Brown. Mostly everything else though, I'm, I'm gonna use just Calvin Brown is good enough for, for, like for bandages and straps and everything else. Okay, so we're gonna move on. I'm gonna let you do that and then we're gonna move on with the next model. Next All right, so now we're gonna take our ball red and we're gonna thin it down a little bit with water. We're gonna paint it into the recesses of the model, only on the skin. We wanna avoid the gray hair. Definitely wanna avoid any of the bones that you've painted. If you do manage to accidentally get some of the wash on the bone, then you can paint over it again with denim stone. And this is ball red, it's a citadel wash. And like I said, you wanna thin it down just a little bit because in just a moment, we're going to wash the model next with... Oh, not cereal. Purple! Leviathan Purple. And this is what your model is going to look like. Sorry, I had to get the Leviathan Purple wash. This is what your model is going to look like when it's got a purple wash added on top of the red. You want to let the red wash dry first, but it gives it a very, very bruised, sickly, disgusting pallor to it. At the same time you do this, you want to take a little bit of Bad Black and wash it into the teeth. And that's going to create a very nice shadow effect. Let me see if I can find one that I've done earlier <laughs> for him. Mmm, cereal. Yeah, here we go. So this is one that I washed a little bit of bad dab black into the teeth. And as you can see at this point, once the washes are dry, you also want to paint skull white into the eyeballs. So it's very gross. Like yeah, I, if you can't tell, I've been watching a lot of Walking Dead lately, and all oh, those zombies are gross, sick, disgusting. So you can either do it like how I've done it and have it have the washes just cover the model and this is one or you could do it like this this was one of my test models where I splotched it on in patches the washes so it's not completely covered in purple and red you can still see some of that pallid skin tone underneath but this is mainly just the washing phase so <clears throat> bad that black you're gonna put into the teeth you're also gonna use it to wash the codex gray hair on the body and meanwhile for the skin you're going to use ball red and then leviathan purple <laughs> okay and don't worry if you think it's too dark or if you think your ghoul starts is starting to look like a berry because we're going to highlight him back up in just a little bit all right so we'll see you when all of those are done so after the washes have dried we're going to put it on a mix of talarn flesh and rotting flesh and as you can see the green of the rotting flesh is going to mix really well with the pink of the talarn flesh and you're going to use that to line the center of these scars and these giant pimples to make it look like they're just about to burst like their white heads just about to burst but then they're a little bit green so it looks like they're filled with pus and with the with the purple and the red washes underneath and behind it it's going to add a lot of character to your ghoul units. So go ahead and do that on all of the scars and all of the bumps and pimples on all of your guys. And then we're going to finish up by doing some final details and highlights and working on the bases. Alright, here's my unit of ghouls completed. And I was thinking of just doing some overview of doing some little wrap-up overview of the details that you can do for each one but I decided in the end that you know it's probably gonna be better to just show you what I did 
with each model because if you use these pieces then it's going to certain pieces are going to affect how you paint so yours might not look exactly like mine but I'll show you there there are certain pieces on just about every model that are going to require some extra attention so for this guy you just want to make sure that when you're painting the bones in his back that you go with the lighter tone. So when I highlighted back up, I used Deneb Stone and then I mixed in a little Skull White at the tops so that those pop out a lot when you're looking at the model from across the table. He, he's holding a skull and it's up to you really whether you want to paint that bright or not. I decided to keep it a little bit muted so that your eyes really get drawn into the face with the white eyeballs. This next guy He's got some blood dripping down his mouth, so I painted that up. I highlighted that up with a little bit of blood red. And what else is there on his model? I love going over these old scars and these old boils and stuff with that rotting flesh, Talon flesh mix. It really highlights them really well. This guy who's my unit champion with the missing eyes got lots of scars and I decided to go really dark with him so oh and there's his oh look look at those two warts about to pop those are so gross I kind of drew between what I saw from The Walking Dead some recent zombie movies as well as The Descent for those of you who remember remember that movie I drew a lot of inspiration from that as well because that's those creatures are kind of what these guys remind me of you know, subhumanoid looking just monstrosities. I also went over each claw with Dark Angel's Green and then again with Gloss Varnish Art Coat with a paintbrush and that's going to give it a very sickly poisonous look as you were sending these guys across the field. Um, this guy, I decided to go a little bit dark with his with the purple glazes and the red glazes. And see where are the guys that had the some of these guys had metal pieces on them. Oh, here's the one with the anatomy pulling the, the guts along, pulling his meal along. So I went over the guts with red gore, and then again with light purple, a thin glaze over the right side of the arteries, and then that should be enough for that. I also did talarn flesh mixed with rotting flesh for the skin, and I didn't shade it. So I left that just kind of sickly, rotting look to it. And I think that is about it. Here's one of the guys with some metal on him. And I just washed that bolt gun metal with Bad Dad Black. Here's another guy. Not much to say about this one, I think. Yeah, I think individually they look alright, but when they're gonna be in a full horde, 10 men wide, they're really gonna pop on the field. Okay, so this guy's got a little metal disc in his chest, so I painted that with bolt gun metal. And um, yeah, just a lot of bone piercings. So mostly for the bone, let me back up, show you the whole unit. Mostly with the bone, I tried to go with, for any bone piercings and trophies, I tried to go with a, lighter color so then of stone mixed with skull white so that when you're looking at it from far away from a table's distance away the bone fragments pop out at you and then when you look in closer then you really get to see the detail but if you're looking at it at the unit from this far away just imagine if there were you know 40 50 60 of these guys drenched in blood and gore with sickly bruised purpley skin advancing towards you across the table and then when you really go in there and you get to look at the the detail in each model then you see that you know it's not that much work it's the washes that really do all the work for you getting into the grooves and stuff it's it's just how much you want to put into the detail so there you go please leave some comments let me know how you paint your ghouls if you paint them any differently if you think this might be a good way to paint a unit of your ghouls on the table and um, don't forget to like, subscribe, favorite this video if you're if you're enjoying Spooky Toberfest and you want to help help a brother out. <clears throat> and 
Be on stay tuned for more Spooky Toberfest videos, war boss tutorials, and all that great stuff. Like I said, this is another girl painting video competition entry for her 7,000 subscriber con contest competition on making a painting tutorial. So I've just been cranking out these war boss tutorials just because I've had such great inspiration from her this month. So thanks for watching y'all, take it easy, and we'll see you in the next one.